Grace be with you, God our Father, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. For the beginning of this Lenten season with Ash Wednesday, we have made a Lenten journey. From sackcloth and ashes, we have now come to the cross. It is a tragic journey, a journey filled with sorrow, a journey that leaves us emotionally distressed and drained. Because like Jesus, we knew all along where this journey was going. We knew we would come to this day, this Good Friday. We knew that we would come to the cross. To understand and to give meaning to our journey, we go back to a time long ago in the Old Testament in the days of Moses and the wilderness wanderings of the Israelites. See, God had promised to live with His people. And He gave Moses directions for the construction of the tabernacle. There in the most holy place, God made His throne room on earth so that He would be truly present with His people. But God's presence has drawbacks, difficulties. How can the unholy people of Israel live in the presence of the Holy One of Israel? How can the unworthy be in the presence of the Righteous One? How can man be face to face with God? How can anyone stand in the presence of the Holy One? But God wants to live with His people. And so He made a way. He created the Day of Atonement. One day of the year, the high priest would go into the most holy place. One day of the year, the high priest would take the blood of a goat behind the curtain and place it on the mercy seat to atone for the sin of the people of God. All so the people of God could be cleansed of their sin. All so they could dwell with God without fear. However, on that day of atonement, there were actually two goats. One goat was sacrificed. The other goat was the sin bearer. See, God instructed Moses to have the high priest place his hands on the head of that sec- second goat, the live goat and transfer the sins of the people to it. Then the high priest was to have that goat sent out into the wilderness, back to Satan, back to the father of sin. All the sins of the people were carried away by this sin bearer. Two goats, one which was the sacrifice to wash away the sins of the people with its blood, and the other which carried the sins of the people back to Satan. Two goats, one atonement, all so that God could dwell with his people. But the two goats did more than that. In a mysterious way, these two goats were preparing God's people for something more, pointing them to this day, when two goats would be replaced by the goat. A lamb. The day when Christ, who would play both roles, sacrifice and sin bearer. Isaiah writes, Surely he has borne our sins and carried our sorrows. We see there the picture of the suffering servant as a sin bearer. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He took upon himself the sins of the whole world. His sin-bearing journey started in a river and ended on a tree. In his baptism, Jesus took upon the sins of the world and carried them out into the wilderness, back to Satan, following the path of that second goat. And his sin-bearing journey continued all the way up to this moment, to Good Friday, the path to the cross, where he was lifted up for all to see. Can you see them? Can you see your sin that Christ has carried to Calvary's hill? Can you see your shame that is no longer your own? 
Jesus bears it all for you. Jesus is also the other goat, the sacrificial goat, stricken, smitten by God and afflicted for you. He is the one whose blood is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sin. Listen again to Isaiah. Despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. We are healed. Sin bearer and sacrifice. Isaiah shows us both goats. Isaiah shows us Jesus. And he continues. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus bore that sin. He shed his blood and declared, It is finished. And when our Lord and Savior hung his head in death, an amazing thing happened. The sky went dark, the earth shook. The rocks split and the curtain of the temple, the barrier of the most holy place, tore in two from top to bottom. The most holy place, that which was God's throne room, was revealed, opened for all to see. That no priest was needed. Jesus, the sin bearer and sacrifice, took his very own blood through that curtain into the most holy place, poured it upon the mercy seat himself. One final sacrifice. Indeed, it is finished. It is finished. The journey that began so long ago has come to this place, and it is is finished. The Lamb of God, sin bearer and sacrifice, fulfills and gives meaning to our journey as we have traveled with Him from exile to the cross. An instrument of torture and death now transformed into a life-giving tree as Christ has paid the price. And so it is that this day, even in its tragedy, is truly In Jesus' name, amen.